Welcome, everybody, to The Huddle, Kega 9's weekly streaming sports talk show. Not every single week in the summer as we you know, take a few weeks off. We do about 40 a year, so if we're going to take a couple off, we're going to do it in the summer when we're not talking about U of A football and basketball games. But we try not to let two weeks go without doing a show. i uh, joined always by Pat Paris. Pat, good afternoon. How are you? Hey, good, Jason. Yeah, you, you know, you need some time off to relax. Uh, and what better time than the summer when things aren't happening on a daily basis? Although you've got football going now, uh, we've, you've got a lot of sports going on now and just got done with the Olympics. So, yeah, so we'll start with our huddle poll question before we get to some other topics. And uh, that talks about uh, Arizona football and, and captains. I don't, you know, I don't know if captains are a big deal to you, Pat. They are to some people, they aren't to others. So I put the, the question out here, who should be the offensive Arizona football captains? And the reason why I put offensive is because a lot of times, you know, teams will have defensive captains, special teams captains, you know, but some coaches go game by game. Some coaches go by the season. Uh, some some coaches aren't really big fans of captain. So we've got an A, B, or C. If, if Arizona was going to have offensive captains this year, should it be no win T-Mac for the whole season? Should they rotate by game to get other players involved? Or, hey, listen, this just doesn't matter. Captains are overrated. Pat, I'm going with A. No win T-Mac should be the captains of this team. Go ahead. I, I uh, We don't always agree. In fact, we rarely agree. But We're going to disagree not, later in the show, by the way. Yeah, we'll disagree on other topics. Uh, I, I do agree with this one. I think it's kind of a no-brainer. Is, is I always like to, uh, you know, the, who, who are the guys that have had the most impact and, and get the attention of the rest of that unit? So in this case, it would be offense, right? So who are the guys that are the leaders? Who are the guys that everybody looks up to and then listens to? And clearly in the offseason, when Jed Fish left and Brent Brennan came aboard, it was Noah Fafita and Ted Aro McMillan that got the rest of that group to say, for the most part, hey, we're going to stay. You should, you should stay. And they stayed and they stayed through spring uh, camp when they could have uh, left during that little window as well in the transfer portal. So I, I think it's Noah and T-Mac. Now, if you if you wanted, you could rotate a, a guy or two. You know, maybe one of the. Are you in players. favor of of ro you know rotating game by game, or are you in favor of hey before the season starts, here's the captain who's you know if I were a head coach, I probably would look at it like all right, I'm going to pick two guys from offense, two guys from defense, and a special teams guy, and maybe that maybe a, a, a sixth captain. That's a lot of captains, by the way. Maybe a sixth captain where that it's the guy that you know almost like the guy that gets the, the scholarship midway through the season or something like that. Almost like every week, it's the guy who really stood out uh, in practice that week who maybe isn't even a starter but needs to, deserves to go out there. Maybe you do something like that. All right, so we'll check on those results later in the show. Uh, Arizona football starts on the 31st against New Mexico. Yeah, the first game for, for new head coach Brent Brennan. We'll get back to Brennan in, in a second and talk about him a little later. But I had a conversation, uh, Pat, recently with uh, Alex Bowman, NASCAR driver from Tucson, who we're going to find out in this uh, little interview here. Hasn't been back in Tucson in quite some time. I, I can't believe uh, uh, how long it's been. I guess he's a North Carolinian uh, now, but uh, recently got his first win in Chicago. And uh, so we chatted about that and a couple of other topics. So, uh, Pat, here, and we'll, uh, we'll play this and then talk about it afterwards. Here's my recent conversation with uh, NASCAR driver of the 48 uh, Chevrolet Cam Camaro, uh, Alex Bowman. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that was obviously um, great to be able to do, you know, coming off of a couple injuries and, and tough years, I think um, getting a win was uh was good for me and, and good for the whole team obviously but just meant a lot to be able to overcome those things so um getting it at a street course like chicago was was super awesome as well i hadn't won a road course before and we've been close plenty of times so meant a lot to uh to get back to victory lane it had been way too long so glad to to be able to do that you mentioned that you hadn't won a road race before but you've actually been doing a lot better on the road courses how much confidence does that plus the win give you going into the playoffs when you have a, a road race like Watkins Glen in the postseason? Yeah, I think, you know, Watkins Glen is kind of the last road course that I don't feel super confident going to. Um, the rest of them, you know, I feel like we've had really good runs and honestly shots at winning most of them. Um, you know, even even the Roval we've been really strong at. So uh, got to figure out Watkins Glen a little bit, but definitely have more confidence. You know, I, I wasn't super confident going to Chicago either. Um, but you know, we were, we were really fast all weekend. So I'm excited. Um, you know, I think our road course program has been really good and, and 
I've been slowly but surely figuring them out for sure. It was interesting at the end of the race where you got bumped by Bubba Wallace and you kind of handle it pretty well. You have a very non-confrontational style. You kind of just, you know, played it off. Oh, he barely hit me. He had every right to. Where does your non-confrontational kind of style uh, come from? Um, I don't know. I, I honestly, like, if I would have been mad about it, I I would have, uh, I would have said I was mad about it. I just, I thought that he, um, you know, I spun him out earlier in the day, so I understood him being mad and, and us winning probably didn't make that any better, um, for sure. But yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm not a super confrontational person and, um, that was just a situation where I kind of called it how I saw it. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I've seen some people saying they thought I had my belts loose and stuff like that, which I didn't, none of my stuff was loose. My window net was down, but that was it. So, um, I think the wall being right there made it look bigger than it than it really was. And um, yeah, I kind of just called it how I saw it. You did have a stretch run earlier in the season when you were pretty hot. I think it was like maybe six top tens in a row. What is it going to take to do well in, in the postseason? Obviously, you got tough competition. Your teammates are, are competition. Is it just about being consistent, getting on a run, a little bit of luck or a little bit of everything? Yeah, I mean, I think a little bit of everything. Um, you know, we've had really since Chicago, we've been pretty solid, um, you know, obviously winning Chicago, ran third at Pocono and and had a shot at running top five at Indy and the strategy just didn't go our way and then got crashed there at the end. So, um, you know, I think getting good at the right time is really important. So those last 10 weeks obviously matter a lot. We've had, a, we had a really great playoff run in 2020 and a really terrible summer. So, um, you know, I think sometimes while momentum does matter, um, I don't think you have to be perfect, you know, on, on that 11th week, it's the 10th week on that matters, but, um, just trying to, to be there. And obviously it's a really diverse group of racetracks, so can't really focus on one thing. You have to try to be good everywhere. And I feel like we're getting to that point. Um, you know, our, our short track stuff needs to improve a little bit, but, we're definitely gaining on it, and uh, hopefully we'll be in a, a good spot going into the start of the playoffs and, and go from there. Bowman and his team sponsor, Ally, have a program somewhat similar to that of Kega 9 parent company, EW Scripps. While we have the If You Give a Child a Book campaign, Alex reads to kids about financial literacy. What have you learned about financial literacy, and, and how much do you enjoy reading reading to kids? Yeah, that's been a, a super cool program with Ally. You know, it's not really covered a ton. So um, just trying to, to help some kids learn about money to, to help set up their future and kind of have more of an understanding of things is, is cool. We just read uh, Planet Z and the Money Tree. Ally's done a really good job at putting just enough really big words in there that are huge tongue twisters that I embarrass <laughs> myself in front of a, a classroom full of kids on a regular basis. You know, obviously you, you went to Ironwood Ridge, but you've got a, a very busy schedule traveling around the country doing appearances and and of course racing have you been back to tucson recently and how often are you able to get back here yeah honestly i haven't been back in quite a while i think like november of 2020 was the last time i was there so Are you serious it's been that long yeah it's it's been a long time for sure my family was out here for the 600 and we were kind of talking about different tucson things because we're all kind of out of out like my mom's side of the family at least is all out of tucson at this point but um yeah definitely um cool place to grow up and i'll have to get back soon sorry i muted myself there for a quick second uh, that was alex bowman driver of the 48 uh pat we, we chatted recently uh sounds like his mom's side of the family has moved away from tucson that's kind of what, yeah. what i got from that but i believe his dad still owns a, a body shop here if i'm not mistaken his dad's kind of private i don't think he really likes to be to be interviewed that much. So uh, I was a little surprised he hasn't been back, but uh, still something for the town to be proud of. I mean, how many NASCAR drivers has, you know, Tucson had? I know Phoenix has Michael McDowell, who's uh, really been in the sport now a long time and is really a popular driver and is fantastic with the sponsors. Won a day 2500, of course, made his name with that crash at Texas Motor Speedway and qualifying back in 2008. I think it was his second yeah. start when he flipped over several times and was okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but still cool to have a, a driver from from Tucson and uh you know sounds like he's had some some injuries uh, the last couple of years uh, uh concussion and and uh back injury and uh it looks like he's on the other side of it and that win kind of a few weeks ago at Chicago cemented that
Yeah, and I think the whole thing about not coming back to Tucson, and you might have you might have just touched on it, uh, not even knowing that that is part of the reason. But you know, he went through all those injuries, and he was kind of, you know, maybe it was just sticking right around the, you know, the garage in North Carolina and his house there. And uh, it, certainly, you know, his father's gone to visit him and gone to watch races and things. So it's not as if he doesn't still have that Tucson connection. But getting back here just hasn't been uh, a top priority yet. And Maybe when his racing days are done, we'll see him a little bit more. But he's still got a lot of races to go. Eight wins now in NASCAR. And, right. you know, Jason, he's kind of, he's one of those guys that might just win a championship. Got to get hot at the right time. All you have to do is get and lucky, hot. as he said. Yeah, and yeah. lucky, too. You know, he, and, he's, and, he's and got the same equipment as some of yeah, his teammates. That's it. I was just going to say, yeah. he's, he's got a great uh, uh, ownership. He's got a, a great uh, crew. He, uh, there's just there's no reason why he doesn't have the ability to win it. It's just whether or not he will. And it's really hard to win a championship, obviously. All right. I thought Pat would touch on something else nationally because it's kind of, I think, a little bit of an issue here, or at least something that I've noticed. And it has to do with college football and reporting injuries. And, you know, last in late 2022, Arizona had an offensive lineman named Jordan Morgan. He tore his ACL. Everybody knew he tore his ACL. It's not a secret. He rehabs, comes back, has a terrific season, and is a first-round draft pick by the Packers. But now, and I like the way that was handled, now with, with Brent Brennan in here for Arizona football, there's this era or of secrecy. I'm not sure really that's the best way to go, Pat. I believe in transparency. We have a situation in the spring where the the arguably the best player on the team, Ted Roy McMillan, is hurt seriously, but nobody knows. They don't put out an injury or a statement or anything like that. Nobody's allowed to talk about the injury. The guy's in a boot and a scooter, so we have to maybe guess broken foot, right? We don't know. Okay. And now here we are several months later, and and the guy who is going to be the starting left tackle to replace Jordan Morgan, Raymond Polito, he is, quote, unavailable this year. And you asked about it to Brent Brennan, and he says, we ain't going to talk about injuries. Ah, come on, man. You know what? It's almost a matter of time before these guys are, 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 are paid more than NIL. They're already paid NIL. They're quasi-professional athletes. Their scholarship is more than $50,000 when you take into account tuition, uh, the, the board that they get the, for the stipend for housing, the food. That's north of $50,000, okay? And... You don't think an NFL team's going to want to know what Tedaroa McMillan's injury was? You don't think well, the, NFL... the NFL team will? The NFL team will find out what Tedaroa McMillan's injury. Well, what is he? What is he keeping all this a secret because, for? Because Jason, until you have to, until there's a rule, and I know the SEC's kicking around that, right? They're the ones that are uh, probably Steve leading the Sarkeesian, the, the head coach at Texas, is is in favor of an injury report like they have in the NFL. Yeah, and until that happens, you're missing out on. And, and there's there's Sarkeesian, the uh, Texas coach, and he's the one pushing for this. And 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 in, but until you get that, so why would you let your opponents know what to look for or to, to go after with a with an injury? Why Does would it really you, help an opponent to know that Raymond Polito has this or you, that? He's not going to play. Why Just do you? Me. Well, that that might be a whole nother story. You don't know what's going on there. That could that, be, that, that, that be non injury related. That's, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Now, as far as Tedero McMillan goes. That's between Tedero and McMillan and 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 uh, uh, the training staff and then the head coach of whether they want that out or not. I, I go back to to for, first and foremost, if you don't have to report them, why would you report them? Now, as a as a media member, of course we want to know, and as a fan, of course you want to know. It becomes a cat and mouse game, like what Rich Rodriguez played, where. He said, I don't, you know, I'll put out the injury report on Thursday. Well, why did he put out the injury report on Thursday? Because that was the day after the final media availability, right? And right. Then how he put it out was not for the media or the, I don't care about me, it's for the fans. It was not for the media or the fans. He put it out for the opposing team. <laughs> <laughs> right to just like throw them all it's like, stupid it's it, a cow and mouse it, game it if everybody's transparent then everybody has the same level playing field i'm not saying pat arizona should report the injuries and the other team shouldn't i'm saying everybody should be honest transparency and is I'm, the way to go and everybody yeah. should report the injuries and i'm okay with that if that's the rule but if it's not the rule then why would you be the only ones or or one of the only ones that, that, that gets out ahead of it and, and how did that hurt everybody? arizona football last year What's that? How did that hurt any team in the past by saying the guy's hurt? How does that hurt anybody? Well, what what I go back to is what they do in the NHL, and that is, you know, they're so general with their upper body, lower body, and what you're trying to what you're trying to avoid is 
letting somebody know where, a, 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 especially a skill position player, you don't want them to know exactly what that issue might be because they might target that. You, they, may, they may go after a guy and say, all right, he's got an ankle, let's go. When he's down on the pile, go after that ankle. I mean, there have been bounties in the NFL, uh, you know, look no further than New Orleans Saints and what they got into. Uh, that happens sometimes. And so I'm not saying that's going to happen in the Big 12 under the University of Arizona. I just say until they make me do it, I'm going to be as, as, as secretive as I can about exactly the injury that a guy's got. If he's healthy, he's healthy. If he's not, I'll tell you he's not. And he's not going to play. It makes it into a bigger deal than it already is. Like, like here, we're talking about it. You know, we wouldn't be talking about it if they just said, "Okay, Tedero McMillan broke his leg, uh, broke his foot. Uh, he had surgery. He's going to be 100 percent by the season opener. We're just going to be a little bit cautious the first week of training camp and, and just milk him, you know, kind of in gradually, and then it'll be fine." You know, I don't think anybody's going to go after his broken his broken foot from before. It should be already healed. Well, that that's a, an individual case, but they did say that he, they expect him to be back for the for in time for the season. I mean, they, they didn't hide that fact. It wasn't like, well, this is a one year injury and we're not going to see him again until next spring or something like that. Yeah. If an offensive lineman is playing with a cast on his left arm or hand or something, I mean, we can figure out what's going on. Yeah. I, I think where we could find some common ground, Pat, is that this should be mandatory for everybody. Everybody should have to say, you know, what what the injury is. And and just kind of go from there. Yeah, you know, I remember a funny situation. Remember the whole Alondro Trier? This wasn't an injury, but the whole Alondro Trier, Trier yeah. situation. Yep. So he's coming back, and it was the, he was going to come back for the UCLA game at UCLA. Right. But they right. didn't want anyone to know he was going to come back for the UCLA because they wanted the element of surprise. Well, sure enough, the night before, everybody knows that Alonzo Trier is uh, 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 going to come back. And uh, that's, by the way, uh, uh, we'll get to this in a second. That's not Trier, but but but, but we'll, we'll get there. It's not a bad, my, my bad. Um, uh, you know, the night before everyone knows he's going to come back, they still put up 90-something points on UCLA. It didn't make any difference. Didn't make any difference. You know? Didn't make any difference. So I think we could find some common point. Uh, my bad on the basketball. We can go to that well, now, though. Well, hold on. We're, real go quick. Ahead. One last thought on this, basketball. Jason. It yeah. is is what drives – what drives a lot of things in sports right now? More than anything, what drives a lot of sports viewership and uh, and, and eyes on the sport is be is betting, right? Gambling is and and to that extent, you know, those who bet on the games, you and I do not, but those who bet on games would sure like to know if you know the quarterback at Oklahoma is a hundred percent healthy or not. Or the guy at Alabama is uh, going to. Well, that's play the or reason not. to have it, right? Yeah, that's the that, best reason. So, yeah. So if that's your argument, then then let's be transparent in that way too. We need to say the reason we're doing this is not for a competitive advantage, just advantage more. It's we're going to try to make it so everybody has all the information they need for uh, their ability to enjoy the game. Let's put it yeah. that way. Okay, so uh, that's just a thought I had. We'll see how that develops, uh, and, and, I, and I think that we might have a real change uh, down the road. But we'll see. Anyway, before we get we, before we finish up with the whole uh, the huddle poll question, I did want to show the basketball and uh, Arizona and UCLA. Uh, we knew this was going to happen. I mean, it first happened with Tommy Lloyd saying that he wanted to renew it, and they already are playing this year at the Footprint Center. Uh, we're going to have a game the following season, uh, 25-26 in. Las Vegas, and then one in the 27th season in L.A. So it's nice that they're renewing the rivalry. I think for the Arizona fans, you'd like to have one in Tucson. I think they consider this one in Phoenix maybe a quasi-home you know, home game for Tucson. But you want one at McHale Center because I tell you what, Pat, when, when you are in McHale Center an hour before tip-off and it's UCLA, yeah, you can feel it. And I'm not, I wasn't imagining it, okay? When I was no. in that arena – an yep. hour before tip off against UCLA and they're both you know good ranked teams and all it is a completely different feel yeah but this is all driven by money Jason and and remember you're only allowed so many home games but you're allowed those those uh those neutral site games too and I think that for for Arizona uh it probably makes sense financially to have a neutral site game where not only uh does the arena hold more people uh you're going to charge more money for those seats and you get a better better tv deal because it's national television i think it adds up more to that's why phoenix and vegas look like more appealing things and even if this third game we're talking about is in la at say staples center that's bigger gonna get more money more and it's a neutral site as well 
I just think uh, that's where that, that that drives. It's the money that drives this um, as much as as far as where the site of the games is more than anything. Yeah, it's just kind of similar to when we went to all those neutral site tournaments, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and that's where they had their big non Even, even this past season, remember, wasn't it like Alabama was uh, in Phoenix? and it had okay, a lot Duke of... is coming to McHale Center this year, right? Yeah. Yes, because yes. they did go to – they went to Duke. Yeah. Last year. Uh, yeah. So, so, so but for the most part, a lot of those big marquee matchups between power conference teams, uh, they try to do neutral sites if they can. It may, it just in December, you know, November, especially December, it just, it sets up really well for a national TV audience. Yeah. You want that one big game. I'm looking forward to, to, to do coming in and, uh, and, and that, that should be exciting for sure. Um, so, so yeah. All right, let's let's finish it up with the with the huddle poll question. See how, what the results we had. I think a lot of people are going to pick A, uh, but it should be kind of interesting. I would have guessed uh, maybe a little bit more for A. So, uh, tw- you know, a lot of people feel captains are overrated. I remember Pat when Derek Jeter was named the Yankees captain in '03, and everyone was like, "What's the big deal? He's been the de facto camp- captain for years." Yeah. You know, so some people think it's overrated. I don't think it is. You know, I think to have a leader on the floor, a leader on the court, leader on the field is a big deal. So, um, well, so in football, I was just kind of curious what everybody would pick. In football, you need a, at least one captain to go out there and uh, for the, the coin toss. toss. Right? Yeah. I mean, you have the honor. Arizona's an honorary captains in the past. Uh, Nick Foles was one last year. Yeah, they usually have one, one yeah. former wildcat come back and yeah, I, but I, I, I don't think they're overrated. I understand what people are saying is you don't, you don't need to put too much emphasis on it, but I think they're a, ne- a necessity and, you know, these guys deserve it. Yeah, and they and they're they're deserving of it. And you know, take that captainship away, and then you got guys moping around, going, "What do you mean I, I'm not captain? I'm, I'm the starting quarterback and the star wide receiver. Why aren't I a captain?" You know, I'm not saying that's re- the only reason you give it to them, but it's certainly a reason that they deserve it. Uh, and it's it's nice. I mean, it just makes guys feel good about about where they are on the team. Yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, Arizona football starts uh, uh, in two and a half weeks, and uh, yeah. and we'll see what they do as as, as far as captains. And uh, next total poll poll question, maybe we'll do the over under uh, for how many wins uh, they get this year. Sounds good. For you were like, you yeah, were right. You were. You I were didn't think closer. ten though. I really. No, felt you, you were closer than I was. I really felt confident in in, in above six. Yeah, but well, I, you don't generally see that massive of an improvement from one year to the next in in uh, in any sport let alone college football now you can see a team drop when they lose a lot of players i understand that but uh, you know barring any you know major uh you know movement with the uh with you know with guys coming and going you didn't expect it to be that big of a jump and it certainly was yeah all right this has been the huddle kega nine streaming sports talk show uh for pat paris i'm jason barr if we don't see you next week we'll see you the week after thanks everybody for uh watching and, and tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time